Good evening and welcome to the Time Chris Barnell. Reporting from Moscow. Tbilisi. Times Square. May your dreams be your only boundaries in life. Hello, and welcome to GHS TV's award winning talk show, Crosstalk. I'm your host, Keith Gilani, joining you from our studios on the campus of Germantown High School. On today's show, we are going to speak with Ms. Rhonda Cloud, the, marketing, the manager of marketing and public relations at the Pink Palace family of museums. She will tell us all about the expansions that the museum has gone, undergone recently, new exhibits that have been set up, and the fun activities that are done each year for Christmas. Ms. Cloud joins us now. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm doing fine. So tell me, what's the difference between the Pink Palace itself and the Pink pa Palace family of museums? The Pink Palace is actually two entities. It's the mm -hmm. Pink Palace Mansion okay. and the Pink Palace Museum. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a museum wing that was constructed in the 70s back when the museum first started, all of the exhibits were inside of the mansion itself, then okay. they saw a need to expand. Okay. Pink Palace kind of became Memphis's attic and everybody right. gave us everything. And they're just two of the seven properties that comprise the Memphis Pink Palace family of museums. Mm -hmm. So, so you said it was a mansion at first. How, how did it become the museum? Okay, so Clarence Saunders, see you all should be very happy, very <laughs> proud of Memphis. Oh, definitely. Things that change how the world operates today came from Memphis, mm -hmm. and one of them is the invention, the creation of the modern grocery store. Was it Piggly Wiggly? That was Piggly Wiggly. Right. It was done by Clarence Saunders. Right. And with his first fortune, he wanted to build a mansion that would last for hundreds of years mm -hmm. and on the outskirts of town at the time. Mm -hmm. And he imported Georgian, uh, pink marble from Georgia, from right. the state of Georgia, and uh, locals started calling it the Pink, the pink Palace. Palace. But before he ever completed the mansion, mm -hmm. I like to tell this story when we have visitors from up north, the Yankees on the New York Stock Exchange <laughs> basically cheated, oh, really? changed their rules in the middle of the night, uh, and Saunders was the victim of a hostile takeover, which he had won, oh but then they called the margin early. He lost mm. his fortune. And you could literally see for a long time where the workmen on the third floor of the mansion laid their tools down and just walked away wow. when he lost all of his money. So this was a huge piece of land. Mm -hmm. A development company out of Louisville, Kentucky, bought okay. it, and they were going to do a subdivision, mm -hmm. which is now Chickasaw Garden. Okay. And um, they had this huge pink palace, this big pink mansion. Right. It had been finished on the outside. The interior was not finished. Right. And they were going to tear it down, mm -hmm. and they were persuaded to donate it to the city of Muse uh, Memphis, mm -hmm. and it was the Natural Museum of Industrial Arts or something. Same strange name that mm -hmm. they used, and that was 19, uh, that was in the 20s. In okay. 1930, the museum opened. Okay, so has it has it always been the same way that it is now, just a pink palace, and or has the museum really grown since since then? What were the stages of its growth since the 20s? Pink Palace has grown so much. The first um, items that were donated to the museum uh, to become an exhibit mm -hmm. to, w was um, a whole bunch of stuffed an mounted animal heads, you oh, know, taxidermied okay. right. animal heads, and right, right. we have a lot of them. <laughs> and, um, you know, one of the iconic ones is the polar bear, which is in right. the lobby. And they built classrooms upstairs in the mm -hmm. mansion, mm -hmm. um, laboratories. Uh, as it grew, the citizens of Memphis and the people who were involved in it realized a need for more than just looking at this stuff. They, right. they thought education behind it. Right, a lot right. of people aren't aware. We have a huge education department at the mm -hmm. Pink Palace. Everybody says, oh, I went there as a child. Well, you went there <laughs> not just to go look at stuff, but as, but as part learn. of your education. Right. And it's evolved since then. And then in the right. 70s, the friends of the Pink Palace um, 
mounted a campaign. They started the crafts fair in order to raise money to donate it to the museum mm -hmm. to help build the museum wing, which okay. juts out very nicely from the side of the mansion. So you talked about education and how that plays a big role in how the museum functions on a daily basis. What, what are some of the newer um, parts of the family of museums that really help with the ex uh, education part of it? Well, over the years, um, we're, we're a magnet and things started coming right. to us. We have the historic properties. Mm -hmm. That's the Mallory Neely House and the McGevney House. They were both closed for a few years. Okay. They're uh, back open now. The Mallory Neely House is significant because it's the only um, historic home in Memphis to retain all of its original furnishings. The family, okay. a family member lived in it until the 70s, I think, wow. and everything, it's a time warp of right. upper middle class life in Memphis. Mm -hmm. And uh, McGevney House, that was the site of the first Catholic mass and first mm -hmm. Catholic wedding in Memphis. It's very, it's a four room, very uh, modest home, mm -hmm. but it's historic significance. You learn a lot about your past. Right. If you don't know your past, you're not really going to be able to predict your future exactly. or help determine your future. Exactly. We have Lichterman Nature Center, which okay. has a curious connection to Clarence Saunders and the Pink Palace. Mm -hmm. um, Lichterman How Nature. So? Lichterman. Sorry. <laughs> Lichterman Nature Center was donated by the Lichterman Lowenberg families. Okay. It was a big preserve out of town mm -hmm. and they had a pool and a pond and they went wow. swimming and fishing and hiking mm -hmm. and they saw a need to preserve it for okay. uh, the Mid-South. But before they owned it, a couple of owners before them, it was actually owned by Clarence Saunders. It oh, was okay. his country place. He had a big log cabin. When I first moved to Memphis, the log cabin burned. The two have no connection. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the log cabin burned down. So uh, Lichterman Nature Center is mm -hmm. part of the family of museums. Okay. We have the Coon Creek Science Center, which mm -hmm. is a working science center in McNary County about two mm -hmm. hours away. Um, scientists go there. It's really cool because it's one of the top ten fossil sites in North America. We have fossils right. everywhere under us. Right. But at Coon Creek, significant in a couple of ways. 80 million years ago that area was covered vast inland sea, right? So right. there are fossils but they're practically on top of the ground. Mm -hmm. So they're very easy to get to and the other significant aspect is that most fossils are the remains once the matrix goes away, mm -hmm. you know, once the genetic material right. is gone, it's the impression that's left. Well, at Coon Creek, the soil preserved the genetic material. So if you get a fossil from Coon Creek, oh. you're getting the real animal, wow. turtle, shell, whatever it is. Oh my God. And um, because of that, uh, like UT Martin goes mm -hmm. out there all the right. time. We have a very good working relationship with them. Once a year, we have a member's day out there where we go and mm -hmm. dig fossils, show people how to clean them, preserve them, and they get to take them home. Wow. The state fossil from, of Tennessee is from, from Coon Creek. Okay. I bet you don't know what it is, do you? I have no idea. It's, I'm not sure if it's pronounced correctly, but it's like P-T-E-R-O. I call it Patero, but I'm okay. sure if the P is probably. <laughs> anyway, so that's the state fossil. It looks wow. like the shell oil shell. Well, that's some great of. history, but you know, there we'll, you go. we're going to continue more about exhibits and events that are uh, coming up when we get back. Uh, to the show. So when we return, we'll hear details about new exhibits that the museum is bringing to us. But until then, stay with us. You can now watch your favorite Germantown community television shows from anywhere in the world. GHS TV is streaming online, live 24-7. A viewing screen displays our channel just like you see on television. Simply visit our website at www.ghstv.org. So log on and enjoy hometown news from anywhere in the world, only at ghstv.org. Every day is so wonderful and suddenly it's hard to breathe. Would it be okay if I sat here? Is she serious? Whatever. New girl. Reaching out. Pass it on. So don't you bring me a message from the Foundation for a Better Life.
Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm your host, Kev Gilani. On today's show, we are hearing about the Pink Palace Museum and Planetarium, one of the largest facilities of its kind in the Southeast. Ms. Rhonda Cloud is with us now. So Ms. Rhonda, in the last segment, we were talking about you know, the history of the Pink Palace. Um, let's kind of talk about the exhibits and events. What are, what are some of the most popular exhibits um, at the Pink Palace? Popular exhibits, we are known nationally and of course locally for the uh, life-size replica of the first Piggly Wiggly store. Mm -hmm. A lot of national TV shows come to town to shoot specifically oh. that. We also have the Clyde Park Miniature Circus, mm -hmm. which real museum people might argue really has nothing to do with anything other than it was donated to us, but it's mm -hmm. a fascinating piece of work, an out-of-work accountant in the 30s, um, loved circuses. That was a uh, Sometimes that was the only entertainment in rural America mm -hmm. at the turn of the century. So he built a miniature circus. A lot of people have done that. But he's got, he even has manure buckets on the wagons for the horses oh. because the horses would have pulled the circus wagons in a parade and people walked along shoveling the manure. Aren't you glad I told you that? <laughs> uh, but it's just fascinating. He's got he's got the midway with the knife swallower and the strong man and even a hoochie coochie dancer, you know. <laughs> and and he figured out how to make them all work. Okay. Um, it's n through no rhyme or reason. He just would make something move and yeah. then go on to the next thing. So the engineering of it is fascinating mm -hmm. as well. We have mirrors underneath it so you can see the underneath and and see how mm -hmm. it works. Um, other than that, we just have, uh, everybody loves the shrunken head, mm -hmm. um, our claim to fame. And uh, the polar bear that I was talking about, we've got natural history, all kinds of skeletons. We've got a hummingbird skeleton right next to the skeleton oh of a ray, which is like a large ostrich-like creature. So you can compare. It's amazing. Oh, wow. um, and we have cultural history, which mm -hmm. is where the circus and the Piggly Wiggly are. Um, We've got the original weights and measures from the riverfront in Memphis back before they had scales and computerized mm -hmm. things. You know, they would yeah. weigh things coming Compared. in. So we've got liquid right. and we've got the original set that was made for Memphis. We've got, for some reason I happen to know, we've got a huge collection of toy stoves from every era. Wow. Why? Because, <laughs> because everybody loves the Pink Palace, oh, yeah. and they think, when some, well, what am I going to do with? It? I'm going to give it to the Donate Pink it Palace. Donate to the Pink Palace. One day we got a FedEx box, and it had an old tiger skin in it. Whoa. No note, just an old just tiger. An I'm donation. sure somebody was cleaning out grandmother's attic and found it and said, "Oh my gosh, what do Palace I do with this? this?" And they shipped it to us. That's great. So you know, the, there's a lot of history behind the Pink Palace and it's it's been this way for years. So, you know, are there any upgrades or renovations that you guys do or are currently in the phases of? Well, if you go inside the Pink Palace, especially in the natural history section, it's um very 70s looking. Mm. Uh, the exhibits not have not been changed in oh. a long time. Okay. So we're in the midst of a master plan that's going to take about 10 years. We began it last year with a renovation of the old IMAX theater, mm -hmm. which was fabulous technology, right. but it's kind of... Everything grows. Yes, and everybody's got out. it now, so we've upgraded to 3D giant theater. Okay. Crew Training International is uh, our sponsor for that, and mm -hmm. they are a local homegrown company, too, oh. that, that has worldwide impact, right. so uh, we're very appreciative of that, but the 3D movies, our screen, we've got a new screen, a new sound system. Oh, I've been there. It's, it's you have, fabulous. You've seen it. Yes, They're yeah. amazing. Plus, we can do, we're doing some like repertory films right, now because right. um, you can show anything on that mm -hmm. screen and it just looks fabulous. And I, when, I, when I went, I would often see educational films. Do you also show other films that are We do institutional films. Mm -hmm. That's, we call them institutional films and they're shorter. They're about 45, 50 okay. minutes long. And um, they are specifically tailored to meet the uh, SS, whatever the, I can't remember what it's called, but what your teachers right. plan your lessons from. Exactly. Um, so it fits it's, with it's the It's tailored to fit the... into the, yes, the okay. curriculum. Okay. And, but with the upgrade to 3D, we're able to show a lot of other things. So like mm -hmm. four o'clock Saturdays we're doing, um, well, right now we're doing Polar Express, right. but we're doing a lot of, uh, we've, we're going to do Harry Potter next year. Oh, wow. That'll, that'll be exciting. Not that I said Harry Potter next 
no doubt. Um, it's going to be fabulous. Awesome. So um, are there any other parts that are being renovated? What about the planetarium? How's, what is that? The planetarium right now is closed for renovations. Okay. We hope to open um, sometime springish 2015. Mm. Um, we're calling it Full Dome Theater because, hmm. and the iconic star projector, if you've been there yeah. and you saw that big thing rise up out of the middle of the floor exactly. and it showed, so it's gone. Oh, it's, okay. um, they don't make them anymore. They don't hmm. use them anymore. We probably had the last one on the planet hmm. and there was no place to put it. So it's gone. There's no mm -hmm. use for it. But with the new capabilities, computerized, we'll be yeah. able to show so much more. And if exactly. you were in the planetarium before, you heard the click, 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 click of right, all the slide right. machines, they are gone. Okay. No more slides. They've busted out the whole thing. There will be more seating capacity, and it will truly be, it will be a planetarium that will be a destination for people rather than just, right. let's go there where it's So, cool. So it's more, it's expanding the the things that they'll be able to show on the screens for yes, the planetarium. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you're going to have better programming that that matches your science classes better. Okay. Uh, when we reopen, I think it's going to be with a show called Astronaut that's really cool to watch, mm -hmm. and we sneak in some um, education. You won't even notice. <laughs> well, you, you, you'll never know. Perfect. And you know, oftentimes there. Are, uh, students that want to go to the Pink Palace and they go, I know there's field trips done through teachers all the time, but during the summer, uh, I heard you guys offered summer passes. Now, do you still do that? Well, you're talking about something we've done in the past, which is a free summer membership. Okay. And I just can't tell you if we're ever going to do it again, mm. but um, whichever camera I'm on, um, but you <laughs> might, <laughs> that's very attractive. Um, <laughs> yeah. You might look for it, uh, keep your eyes open. What we're trying to do is make sure that, we have free Tuesday afternoons anyway. Right, right. right? But we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to come to the Pink Palace. Even people who may not have museums on their radar, they mm -hmm. may not have been raised that way, or that may not be important to them right now, or they may not have the funds for it. Mm -hmm. um, when we do, if we do the free summer membership, um, <laughs> It gives people a chance. You know, so, it's all about education. Exactly, if exactly. you have education, you can't. They can't take that away from exactly. you. Exactly. And who knows who's going to become um, the next uh, physicist because exactly. they've been to the planetarium and seen how the universe is absolutely opening up exactly. in front of our eyes. Exactly. Well, you know, we're. When, when we return with our next segment, we'll talk more about uh, what's coming up in the holidays season. So I hope you have a lot to talk about that. So we're going to hear about all of the exciting activities that the museum does for the holiday season when we return, so stay tuned. Hey, check it out. When it gets cold, it feels like the end. There's no place to go, you know I won't give in. Wow, college already. <laughs> yeah, we gotta go. I love you. I love you too, Daddy. And thanks for everything. Gratitude. Pass it on. A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Welcome back to Crosstalk. I'm your host, Kate Villani. Today we've been joined by Ms. Rhonda Cloud with the Pink Palace family of museums. We've learned about the museum's expansions and recently added exhibits. And now Ms. Cloud will tell us about the many things that the palace does to help spread holiday cheer. So Ms. Cloud, how does the Memphis Pink Palace family of museums help to spread holiday cheer? What, what programs do you guys have? Well, several years ago it was pretty um, empty during the winter months mm -hmm. during November and December mm -hmm. at the Pink Palace because uh, 
there's really nothing you, you don't want to uh, you just compete want to stay against home other cold, stuff. Right. Well, you don't want to compete against <laughs> other things that are going right, around there's town. There's so much. Going on. Well, a long, long time ago, in a land very close to us, um, there was a department store, Goldsmiths, and they mm -hmm. had all the department stores across the U.S. at that time had Christmas displays that were designed to bring people in, shop right, with right, their, right. let their kids watch. And Goldsmiths had one called the Enchanted Forest. And when they closed the downtown Goldsmiths, they donated to Le Bonheur Children's Hospital mm -hmm. to use as a fundraiser. Mm -hmm. And Le Bonheur has had it in several different places, but about 13, 14 years ago, they brought it to the Pink Palace. Okay, and. It's a perfect marriage. Our traveling exhibit space, the Bodine Hall, mm -hmm. is perfect for the Enchanted Forest. Of course, we know how to put on an exhibit, exactly. you know, so, um, and uh, it's a fundraiser for Le Bonheur. It's the Enchanted Forest Festival of Trees. So it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. It's not, so like our members don't get in free to it. Okay. Like they do other exhibits, right. but it's a fundraiser for Le Bonheur. Mm -hmm. and Every one of us has been touched by Le Bonheur in some way. Exactly. You know, if you if you haven't taken your child there, you know somebody who's <laughs> taken their child there, and it's just a beautiful. It, it's so cool. I'm not from Memphis, mm -hmm. but I just love it every year when they start to load it in. And Santa always comes in on the Petey flight helicopter and oh, okay. lands on the front lawn, and that is a free thing. And mm -hmm. that that was November fifteenth this year. Usually, it's the week before Thanksgiving, the weekend okay. before. Um, this year it was two weekends before because Thanksgiving right. was so late. But it's just, it's a family tradition. Mm -hmm. There are people who have been doing it for generations exactly. who remember it when they were children. Exactly. And so now they're able to bring it to the Pink Palace. Well, to augment that, we also have uh, holiday films in the um, CTI 3D Giant right. Theater. Polar Express, Polar I mentioned, in 3D. And exactly. that is a fantastic experience. Exactly. Um, Tom Hanks, or almost Tom Hanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's also a show called The Light Before Christmas. It's mm -hmm. in 3D. And um, then we've got Jerusalem playing also. I've seen that one. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, it's such a nice movie. I love that movie. Nice. I could At the end when the three girls just cross come paths. Together. Thank oh, you. Man. I say that all the time, and you're the only person who has ever said that to oh, me. Yes, when great. they come together, you think they're triplets. Exactly. You have to go see this movie. It's like... Um, a Christian walking through Jerusalem, a Muslim walking through Jerusalem, and a, a Jewish girl, Jewish girl walking, walking through Jerusalem. And, and they and just intersect. But they, and together, they could uh, be triplets. Uh, it really they, makes they you just stop and by. think, doesn't it? Yeah, yes. it definitely does. Plus Jerusalem, please. Uh, it's, it's magnificent. Beautiful. Exactly. It's a wonderful movie. Especially, it's such an eye-opening film. I mean, the educate the things I learned while watching that, I it was know. great. I know. Me too. Now great. I want to go. Exactly. You know, but I <laughs> so, probably never will, so <laughs> I'll travel through the CTI 3D exactly. Giant Theater. Um, so we have those. Usually we have a planetarium holiday show, mm -hmm. and we've got a science show, but it's on a flat screen in the Mansion Theater. Okay. I wish everybody would come see that anyway. We're mm -hmm. trying to, you know, keep the reminder of the planetarium op <laughs> open to exactly. you while the planetarium right, is closed right, until right. it opens again. Um, so we're just really busy and happy. Uh, the Enchanted Forest, mm -hmm. Santa, Santa stays there until Christmas Eve. So when, you know that. When does when do you guys start preparing for? Because it seems like to put together the Enchanted Forest, it would take a lot of time and effort. How how you know, we start? probably have the best exhibits and collection staff in a museum across the country. Right, I it, can tell. Too, small staff, but uh, these people, I tell people these are the real museum people. Mm -hmm. I talk. Yeah. These people know things. Oh, yeah. They're wonderful. And they're working on the stuff year round mm -hmm. and thinking ahead, but when it comes time to load in, they do it very quickly. It, oh, yeah. it takes a couple of weeks, a lot of professionals oh. coming together, but it's, it's, it's fun. So are there any new events that weren't held in previous years that the frequent palace goers can look forward to coming up? Well, you know, we'll reopen the Sharp Planetarium. Right. Um, and that's going to be fabulous and, and a great addition to mm -hmm. the 3D theater. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we're going to close the mansion and start working on upgrading oh, the okay. mansion and make it more of a... Um, 
when the museum moved out into the museum wing, the mansion just has a few iconic pieces, yeah. and it's used for special events a lot. Mm -hmm. It will be used for a whole lot more, like we have plans to move the Piggly Wiggly and the Clyde Park Miniature Circus back into the mansion, oh, okay. so that you can see, kind of see how Memphis grew. You can, it will yeah. tell the story of, of Memphis. We're really looking forward to that. After that, we're gonna redo all of the exhibits, okay. and they will be done along, um, kind of a spine, I think of it as the yellow brick road, <laughs> that kind of takes you through eons and events and Kind of this chronologically. Is connected. Yes, chronologically, okay. Okay. this happened, which made this happen, which right. made this happen. Right. Uh, right now, outside of the Piggly Wiggly, we have a Model T Ford parked. Why? Because the rise of the modern grocery store couldn't have taken place without the rise of modern transportation. Exactly. Now that's kind of lost on people now the mm -hmm. way it is, but when we redo all of the exhibits, it, it will tell the story and, and you won't have somebody irritating like me standing there <laughs> asking you that question. You'll be able to learn that, learn as much as you want. Yeah. Um, so we've got a great 10 year plan going. And now, and now, you know, there's all these programs that have to be put on and they require lots of funds and a lot of people involved in the community. How can those, uh, those people who want to get involved help, whether it be through donations or time even, uh, how can they help out? There are so many ways to help. We are a mm. nonprofit. Okay. We're in partnership with the City of Memphis and mm. uh, Memphis Museums, Inc. We have volunteers. We always need volunteers. Right. We have a volunteer coordinator. And there are all kinds of ways to volunteer. You right. know, you can, if, if you like talking to people, you can be a exactly. docent. If you like computers, you can actually work on some records and things like that. Mm -hmm. We need volunteers. We always need donations especially right. with this master plan. Become a member. Become a yeah. member and just come to the Pink Palace. Or just visit. And you know what? Bring people from out of town to the Pink Palace. Exactly. It is a fabulous. Definitely. Fabulous I know I need to take thing. a visit again now. Yes, you do. <laughs> Not just in school. You need to come. Well, thank you so much. And you're wearing the pink tie for exactly. anyway. Exactly. I am. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for being thank here today, Miss Cloud. You know, people of all ages truly cherish the Pink Palace and everything it brings to the community. Year-round exhibits of every kind help to inform families about interesting facts in a fun way. To learn more about the Pink Palace Museum, visit memphismuseums.org. Thanks to everyone at home for tuning in this week. If you'd like to learn more about our program, visit ghstv.org, where you'll find our live stream and video archive. And be sure to follow us on one of our many social media channels for news, updates, and behind-the-scenes extras. From the entire crew here at GHS-TV, we look forward to seeing you next time for another edition of Crosstalk.